Am I the asshole for not saying anything about the underwear? My 20-year-old daughter and her fiancé are currently staying with us. I love my daughter, but she is very difficult and I can't stand her fiancé. I gave them a deadline to move out because I can't take this anymore. They got into a massive fight the other day while my wife was out. I guess a pair of my wife's underwear got in with their laundry and she thought he was cheating. I think the fact she immediately jumped to cheating shows how bad their relationship is. She was waving the underwear around, and I recognized them because they had a floral print, but I just let this ridiculous fight go on. My wife came home after about 30 minutes and said they were hers. My wife asked if I didn't realize they were hers, and I accidentally laughed. My daughter burst into tears and won't talk to me. Her fiancé said we're fucked and left the house, but my wife thought it was funny. Am I the asshole for firing an employee after his parents died? I'm the VP of sales at a software company, and one of our sales development rep's parents passed away at the beginning of April. Sadly, they were involved in a car crash and both lost their lives. Now the employee in question is a very young 22-year-old guy and has been with us for about 10 months now. He's a great employee, and we were thinking about promotions in the next six months for him. His job is a high-paying one for a new grad, around 90000 with commission and base, so we expect a lot from this position. Because of the accident, we let him take one month paid leave of absence from work, and he's returned a few weeks ago, and his performance is severely lacking. He's super unmotivated, not cold calling, out reaching out to prospects for the last two to three weeks enough since he's come back. Our whole management team has noticed this, and we decided to let him go because we feel like he'd need months and months to be able to produce again, and we can't just wait that long. We called him into a meeting on Friday afternoon and gave him the bad news. He was very calm and rude about it, told us to go fuck ourselves, and got up and went to his desk, grabbed his few things, and left. I thought this was very, very unprofessional and extremely rude. I told my boyfriend about all of this, and he said myself and my management team are a bunch of asses and pricks with no hearts. Am I the asshole for deleting my friend's wedding photos in front of them? I'm not really a photographer. I'm a dog groomer. I take lots of photos of dogs all day to put on my Facebook and Instagram. It's my thing, if that makes sense. A cut in a photo with every appointment. I very seldom shoot things other than dogs, even if I have a nice setup. A friend got married a few days ago and wanted to save money, asked if I shoot it for them. I told him it's not really my forte, but he convinced me by saying he didn't care if they were perfect. They were on a shoestring budget, and I agreed to shoot it for $250, which is nothing for a 10-hour event. On the day of, I'm driving around following the bride as she goes from appointment to appointment before the ceremony, taking photos along the way. I shoot the ceremony itself, and during the reception, I'm shooting speeches and people mingling. I started around 11 a.m. and was due to finish around 7.30 p.m. Around 5 p.m., food is being served, and I was told I cannot stop to eat because I need to be a photographer. In fact, they didn't save me a spot at any table. I'm getting tired and at this point kind of regretting doing this for next to nothing. It's also unbelievably hot. The venue is at an old Veterans Legion and it's like 110 degrees and there's no AC. I told the groom I need to take off for 20 minutes to get something to eat and drink. There's no open bar or anything. I can't even get water and my two water bottles are long empty. He tells me I need to either be a photographer or leave without pay. With the heat, being hungry, being generally annoyed at the circumstances, I asked if he was sure, and he said yes. So I deleted all the photos I took in front of him and took off saying, I'm not his photographer anymore. If I was to be paid $250, honestly at that point, I would have paid $250 for just a glass of cold water and somewhere to sit for five minutes. Was I the asshole? They went right on their honeymoon and they've been all off of social media, but a lot of people have been posting on their wall asking about the photos with zero responses. Was I almost human trafficked, or was I just being paranoid? I went to a concert in Detroit and met a young girl. She was 17, I am 20. I was standing alone by the wall, and she walked up to me and started being really friendly. She was alone and claimed to not know the band, and said she wasn't with the people she came with because they were annoying. She complimented me, called me pretty, asked how old I was. She asked if I wanted to hang out after the concert. She was trying to take pictures of me, said it was for Instagram. She had burn marks and cuts on her calves. It looked like someone put a cigarette out on her. She was talking about how she wanted to have sex with someone and pointed out some guys and called them money worthy. She said she was hungry and asked if I wanted to walk to McDonald's with her. I was just happy someone was talking to me, but my body was trembling and I knew I shouldn't go anywhere with her. 
After I rejected letting her take pictures of me or going anywhere with her, she left me and I didn't see her again all night. It was weird. Was she a recruiter or did I just miss out on making a new friend? What does money worthy mean? I secretly wish that my cousin wasn't related to me so I can date him. I'm currently 19 female, he is 22 male, and the most beautiful person on the planet, both inside and out. We first met when I was 16 and I had an instant crush on him. I didn't know about him, but when he turned 21 and our family went out to drink, he told me in secret that I was the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. Although I was so happy, I knew better than to do anything and then chalked it up to him being drunk. The next day, he sent me the text, drunk talks are sober thoughts, and that he didn't regret telling me that. Now, we have this weird thing where we meet up, talk, and pretend like we're a couple after we drive away far from our hometown and drive back home low-key disgusted with ourselves. Every family meeting is super awkward because we're paranoid our parents can sense what we're doing and we act super distant. They have no clue, though. I wish I could just turn this off because I know it's wrong, but I can't. I sent an application for a college out of state, so maybe I can get out of this situation. I know this might gross people out, but I just needed to get this off my chest. Help for an old guy. I'm a widower who is approaching 80. My wife died about a year and a half ago. We were married for over 50 years, and I miss her very much. I live in a large retirement community, and I recently received a note from a woman who lives here who told me she is done with me. I barely know this woman. We have had dinner twice. Once I was assigned to a table where she was sitting, and once she asked me to have dinner with her. I accepted. I suspect now that was a mistake. I'm not ready for a new relationship, and frankly, I doubt I ever will be. I think about my late wife every day. Sometimes I think about her every hour. I do not believe I'm depressed. I can carry on with my daily life pretty well, actually. I keep busy. I have family in the area, and I see them often. I manage my own affairs, and I have other friends. I just do not want to deal with a female companion. I've been thinking of answering her note as politely as possible, explaining my situation, but I do not want to give her any hint that I'm trying to start a relationship. I just want to say I'm sorry if I offended her, but I meant no harm. It is just that I intended to go through life single from now on. Should I do this or should I just ignore the letter and hope she goes away? Am I the asshole for not waking up my girlfriend for her exam after I overheard her calling me a little bitch? My girlfriend has online summer courses and she had an exam for one of them this morning. I usually wake her up for pretty much everything because she sleeps through her phone alarm no matter how long it buzzes or how many she sets. She has joked that I'm her butler before, and within the context of a relationship, it's okay, so I didn't mind. Obviously, I want to love my partner and try to make her life easy. However, last night she was chatting with her friends, and she thought I couldn't hear. She was bragging that I'm her little bitch, and I do everything for her when she tells me to, etc. It really hurt my feelings because they were making comments like, good, put him in his place, and she was agreeing. She specifically said, yeah, I'm not worried about tomorrow because the bitch will make sure I'm up and he'll probably have breakfast ready for me too. I went to bed pretty hurt by it, and come morning, I didn't bother to wake her up when her alarm started to go. She usually only gets up when someone physically shakes her, but I let her turn off her alarm and she slipped back into sleep, and I turned around and went back to sleep too. When she woke up, she was yelling at me saying I'm an asshole and I've cost her her exam and I'm a piece of shit for what I did. Am I the asshole for kicking out my sister-in-law after she threw away most of my single-use baby products and even formula? I'm 19 female. I have a three-week-old baby girl. I do still live with my parents, but since I pay rent equally, they say I can just have as much of a say in who comes and goes from the house as they do. I've never actually taken advantage of this rule until recently enough. I have a brother who's 26 and his wife is 24. They're crunchy parents to an eight-month-old. Basically, what that is, is fucking stupid. They use reusable wipes, nappies, think formula is the epitome of evil, baby wearing, the list just goes on. I'm the complete opposite. Pacifiers, supplementing with formula due to low supply, disposable wipes, and nappies. They are completely against the products I use and often give me things like sister-in-law's breast milks and bags, disposable nappies the little one has grown out of, etc. I've used some, but it's really not my cup of tea. On Monday night, my brother and sister-in-law were minding my baby for me since it was my birthday. My baby's father took me to go get some dinner in one of my favorite fast food places. It was great and really relaxing. When I got home that evening, my sister-in-law said that she did some cleaning and threw out anything I don't need. This immediately gave me red flags, but they were in a hurry to get out the door and left almost immediately. When I got back into the nursery, every disposable nappy and white pack was gone and replaced with some reusable cloth ones. Same with my formula. 
There was eight tubs and all of it was gone. I'm not able to replace them at the moment and solely breastfeeding isn't sustainable for us. I was extremely angry and I just turned off my phone to avoid being mean to my sister-in-law. She and my brother came over yesterday to collect something they forgot and that was when I confronted her. I told her that she had to replace everything she dumped. When she said she can't afford to do so, I said fine, just get out and don't come back until I've been reimbursed or everything was replaced with the original items. My brother thinks I'm being a massive asshole and he's on his wife's side. Our parents think I'm being completely reasonable here, but they think telling her essentially not to come back is taking it too far. My 19 male best friend 24 female planned this pregnancy. She told me she was on birth control and now she's pregnant after we slept together for a few days. She and I have been best friends for two years now. We're close and we tell each other everything basically. She had never asked me out on a date or anything until we until after we found out that she was pregnant. She and I have had this tension between us before and we both like each other, but never really did anything about it or mentioned it. Long story short, she and I ended up traveling together and we ended up sharing a hotel to save costs. She came on to me and we had sex all during the trip. I suggested we use condoms the first time, but she told me she was on birth control and that she would be fine without them. I don't want to get too descriptive, but I tried pulling away from her, at least not finish inside her, but she would leg lock me and ask me to stay there. A few weeks later, she told me she was pregnant. The baby is 100% mine since I'm the only one she had been with at all. After I found out about the pregnancy, she asked me if we could raise the baby together as a couple and see if things work out for us until marriage. I agree because I have feelings for her and care about her and now I have a baby on the way. I was just thinking about it and thought that maybe this was planned? Or do you guys think this was just an accident and that she's one of the very few to get pregnant despite being on birth control? My roommates are considering letting an underage girl, 16 female, move in with us. Basically, I have three roommates and we're all guys between the ages of 22 and 24. We've been looking for a new roommate since our last one moved out. They're currently deciding if we should let a 16-year-old girl move in with us. I'm the only one who seems to think this is weird. My roommates say they don't care how old she is as long as she pays rent every month. The girl says she's emancipated, in quote marks, but has no proof of it. I find this weird on so many reasons. Mainly because we're adults and she's a child and this could be considered kidnapping or something. Is that just me? Hey everyone, so my best friend's name is Alex. We're both 17 females. When we were younger, around 11 to 12-ish, we had this friend named Lauren. Alex has a really big house and a lot of cool stuff, so about every week we would have a sleepover in her den. It would be me and her, Lauren, and a few other girls. Lauren started saying she had a crush on Alex's dad, which we all thought was weird, but just kind of ignored. Then it got weirder, and she was saying that she wanted to have kids with him and everything, so Alex finally talked to her and told her she thought the whole thing was weird, and if she kept saying stuff like that, she wasn't going able to, she wasn't going to be able to come over to her house anymore. Lauren stopped, and everything was fine for a while, but then we sort of just naturally grew apart from Lauren. We were still friends with her and everything, but she didn't really come over or anything. She'd still talk about Alex's dad, though, just not directly to Alex. At one point, she said she had given him a blowjob. Jesus. But he wasn't even in the country when she said it had happened. He had been on vacation with Alex and her sisters. Anyway, yesterday my brother and I went to the mall kind of far away and I saw Lauren and Alex's dad and they were clearly together and were acting like really affectionate and everything. My brother told me that we need to keep our mouths shut about this because it's none of our business, but I really don't see how I can't tell Alex about this. Even though I know she's going to tell her mom if I tell her, but shouldn't her mom know? I feel like I'm betraying Alex if I don't tell her and if she finds out I knew anything without telling her, it would end our friendship. Estasia robbery to steal from the store where I work. I work for a chain of 24-hour stores. Some time ago, I was working overnight, and I hated it. It made me fully nocturnal to the point that the sun actually burned my eyes when I went out during the day. I hated the store, hated my town, and hated all of my coworkers. Because of this, I was bordering on suicidal, so I would fantasize about just talking about the money and leaving for a good while while I stocked shelves. Did this every night for months, but I knew jail would be worse, so I never did it. Well, one day, I was venting to a good friend about how I was feeling, basically telling him a lengthier version of that first paragraph. 
I figured he would tell me I'm going crazy and I should quit and find a new job that I don't hate so much. Instead, he and I came up with the idea to stage a robbery and take the money together. We took about two weeks to plan and I even called out of one of the shifts so we could hammer out the fine details. The plan was that he would come in wearing a full face mask, long sleeves, and gloves so that you couldn't tell his ethnicity on the cameras. I also knew all the camera dead spots, so we planned his escape route in such a way he couldn't really be tracked by them. We had the whole thing rehearsed and ready as if we were putting on a play. So the night finally comes, and I had him wait until my coworker went on break so we wouldn't have an extra variable to plan around. He walks in during our deadest time of the night, and we start really playing up the whole thing. He's pointing this fake gun in my face, I'm putting my hands up, shaking my head, all that. He has me lead him to the office where he makes me empty the safe for him, then he has me empty the registers for him on his way out. I give him a few minutes head start when I pretend to be rattled and catch my breath, pretend I can't stop shaking enough to dial 911, and finally go alert my coworker that we were robbed and I was too freaked out to do it myself. The cops show up and take my statement. I told them he spoke with an accent that he did not. I fed them a lot of false info to take any suspicion away from my friend. My coworker saw nothing from the break room, so he couldn't give any info himself. It's corporate policy to give robbers whatever they want, so I do not get in any trouble. As a matter of fact, they paid me a bonus for handling it so well. They also took me off of overnight shifts. Later, I told them I wasn't comfortable here anymore, so I put in for a transfer to the town I've always wanted to live in. That process got expedited due to the situation. I'm not confessing to get it off my chest so much as I am because I couldn't be happier I did it. My life turned around immediately, and I have never been happier since I was a kid. Use all the money to finally start college.